Let's look under the hood of the atom. Now there are over a dozen different subatomic particles associated with the atom, but in chemistry we're primarily interested in just three of those. Electrons. These are very small particles that carry a negative charge. Protons. These are particles which carry a positive charge. And neutrons. These are subatomic particles that carry no charge at all. Let's learn more about each of these subatomic particles by considering the manner in which they were discovered. A man named J.J. Thompson is credited with discovering the electron, and he used to do that what is known as the cathode ray tube experiment. And what one has is a very negative pole and a very large pole. And when a high voltage connects those, what was found was that negative particles charged from the negative to the positive plate. But because there was a little slip cut in the positive plate, this beam of materials just kept going, passed right on through it. And what Thompson noticed was, if you took that beam and put it close to a positive charge, it would actually bend toward it. And he noticed if you took that beam and put it next to a negative charge, it actually moved away from it. What does this mean? Because opposites attract, he knew that this beam must have been negative charged. There are also other experiments in which he put a little wheel in front of the beam and it turned the wheel, meaning that it must also have mass. So he concluded that somewhere in the atom there must be negative charges and those negative charges must have mass. Now it was also well known that the element that he used was charge neutral. So if it's charge neutral and we know that it has a bunch of negative charges in it, has electrons, then what else must be true? Well, if it's charge neutral, it must also have a lot of positive charged materials. And so the model became known as the plum pudding model. And that is an atom is composed of positive and negative particles distributed nilly willy about the atom. And this fit the data at the time. There's positive pieces and there's negative pieces and yet the whole species, the whole atom is charge neutral. So far so good. But one experiment showed that the plum pudding model wasn't exactly correct. And that's Rutherford's gold foil experiment. Rutherford ran an experiment in which he took a very thin piece of gold foil now, ideally, he would have liked to have been one atom thick, but it was very thin so that very strong alpha particles could pass through. And if the plum pudding model was correct, because it's mostly empty space, he expected all of the alpha particles to just pass through the material and hit on the back wall of his receptor. Well, what he found out was something totally unexpected. Was that some of these very powerful alpha particles were actually deflected. But even more surprising, some of these huge alpha particles would actually bounce back. So he suspected the plum pudding model could not be right because when these alpha particles hit, there's really nothing for them to hit large enough that would cause them to bounce back. In contrast to the plum pudding model, he postulated that there must be a very, very dense material in the center of the atom that was so dense that if it was hit with an alpha particle, it would actually deflect the alpha particle. And it must also be charged because when a charged particle, such as an alpha particle, it has a positive charge gets near it, the charge repels and it deflects. And so he concluded from that was there was a lot of mass at the center of the atom and that it must be positive charged. In other words, all of the positive charge of the Rutherford model 
it's concentrated in the center. And it's the negative charges that are nilly-willy about the atom. And this proved to be correct. And so with that, the nucleus, the area at the center of the atom where all of the positive charges gathered, was discovered. And the third subatomic particle is the neutron. It was years, years later that it was actually discovered in the 30s. Now they knew it was there because from their calculations there wasn't enough mass at the nucleus. But because the particle was neutral, it was very difficult to detect by experimental means at the time. But eventually James Chadwick did radioactive bombardment experiments on beryllium atoms and the research group observed the expulsion of a neutral particle a neutron from the nucleus. And with that, all three subatomic particles were discovered. The electron, the proton, and the neutron.